Good morning. We uh, welcome you to uh, Green Valley Baptist Church Sunday online today. Uh, it's a um, great day in southern Arizona, and wherever you may be watching from, uh, I hope you're having a good day, and thank you for joining us. It really means a lot that um, we have folks from all across the country joining us uh, online uh, today or even sometimes later this week. It really means a lot to us. So welcome. Thank you for coming. And if you'd like to make a comment concerning our service, go to our website, the gvbcaz.com, and you will find a uh, link to a connection uh, site that you can uh, uh, give us uh, your information. If you would like for us to have that, we can respond back to you and we can say uh, thank you for joining us. Let me make some uh, brief announcements. At this point in time, we're continuing with our online services on Sunday. I know it's the Christmas season. I know this is a tremendous challenge. It's um, Everything's different in 2020. So uh, thank you for being patient with us. We're trying to uh, keep each other safe, and uh, we're Looking forward to the day that we can gather together once more. Shepherding team meeting will be on Tuesday, December the 22nd at 3 o'clock. So if you're a part of that, uh, please remember that. Another special time that we have at this Christmas season at our church is the Saints Alive Christmas program. Dave Alhart and his friends are putting together a Christmas musical. Uh, that's going to be available on our church website to see. There won't be any gathering of people, but uh, they are uh, doing a video of that. And uh, on December the 18th, uh, that video will be available. We were sad to learn this week that our friend, a uh, former member of Green Valley Baptist Church, a charter member of our church, uh, Keith Yant passed away to cope because of COVID. His wife, Norma, uh, also has COVID, and uh, she is recovering at home. In our bulletin that you got in the email on Thursday, we have Norma's uh, mailing address if you would like to send her a card. So we encourage you to do that. And um, Nativity uh, scene drive through. We have one more weekend uh, after this one, and uh, the hours are going to be from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., and the final weekend will end on a week from tonight on December 20th. And if you would like to bring some food items to drop off for our uh, community food bank, we encourage you to do that. We have a couple of birthdays this week, just two of them, and both of them on the same day. Uh, Linda Harper and Tommy Robinson will have a birthday on December the 18th, and we have an anniversary. Ron and Lillian Hayes will be married 25 years December the 16th. So we say happy birthday to each and every one, and happy anniversary, Ron and Lillian. May God bless you. Thank you for joining us today, and uh, JP is, and his team is now going to share with us some uh, music for the season. Thank you for joining us today.
Christ was born just as God had promised. God's people in other times waited and trusted in that promise. Our hope is in Christ who comes into our hearts and promises to return. The candles of faith and hope remind us to trust and anticipate. Today we light a new candle to remind us that God's plans for us grow from his love. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Inside the refrigerator was only a light bulb. Empty cupboards and furniture rescued from discards decorated her clean house. Her husband had left her shortly after their educationally challenged son's birth 11 years ago. Her minimum wage salary provided little. We'll manage, she often said, and they did somehow. She had reason to complain, to be bitter, to not believe. How did she face life so boldly? This day she would cry. We helped her put away the donated groceries from our church. They would have a Christmas breakfast, dinner, and leftovers for the first time ever. She wept when she saw the gifts and the clothes for her son in the bottom of the box, complete with wrapping paper and cards. It would be the first time in 11 years she had wrapped a Christmas gift for him to find under the Christmas tree on Christmas morning. The outdated but neat Christmas tree stood in the corner. Underneath was a cardboard cutout manger scene. Even the most festive home with lights, gifts, food, and laughter could not compare with the worship of a loving mother and handicapped child singing carols. They understood the real news of Christmas. So many with so much can have so little. Others with so little have so much. I wonder if God wept with joy as the greatest of Christmas gifts, his son Jesus, was placed in a manger's crib. God's mighty, miraculous gifts of love are found in unsuspecting, even difficult places. Toys break, clothes shrink, but love endures. It overcomes. Life circumstances do not diminish it. Let's pray. We are surrounded by your love, Lord. Thank you for the gift of the people we love. Help us not to take them for granted. You are the greatest of all our gifts, Jesus. We cannot praise you enough. In your name, amen.
Let's come together and we'll pray right now, okay? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the privilege that we have this morning to gather in your name, to worship you, and uh, to enjoy this music, the truth of the hymns that we have been singing. And Lord, we look forward to the preaching of your word now here in a few minutes. We pray that you'd rest upon the pastor and speak through him, speak to our hearts, Lord, we pray. We also pray for the many of those in our congregation this morning that are going through some difficult times, some challenging times uh, with their health or any other reasons, the COVID fatigue and uh, everything else that we're dealing with right now, Lord. We pray that you'd help us to look to you, help us to draw close to you, help us to look to you for help, for strength. Help us to make much of your word at this time. We pray that you'd rest upon those that are struggling in whatever issues. And now, Lord, we commit the rest of this worship service to you. Uh, we pray that everything that is said and everything that is done, that it would be honoring and glorifying to you, Lord Jesus. And we'll thank you. It's in your name. Amen.
we have certain stories in the New Testament like the parable of the lost sheep where you leave 99 to go find the one. And so God doesn't forsake that one lost sheep. You have these small micro people groups where the gospel has not flowed yet because of geography, because of distance, because of cost, because of uh, culture, because of racism. I really feel that these micro peoples are part of his heart to go after all the sheep, to go after that remnant. In the Amazon, you can go a day without seeing another living soul, which is kind of freaky. But a lot of the reason why you can't see people is because they're hidden. These are hidden peoples, small in population, widely dispersed. They have centuries of a bloody history where they've been exploited. They're animists, they believe in spirits. When you live that way, you tend to be dominated by fear. I see marginalized people, I see forgotten people, I see invisible people that are in desperate need of the gospel. The area is massive, and so to get from where I live, which is already a jungle city, I have to get into a land plane and fly to another port city, and then the next day we get in a boat, and in this slow boat we travel sometimes three days to get to where we're going. Because we're going into areas where the gospel is not, sometimes it just takes time. But recently we have noticed just God opening some doors. God has been working to send out missionaries, indigenous men and women, where there's no evangelical presence. A well-trained and called indigenous man will be much more effective. They tend to be able to get into hard reach areas without government restrictions. You have fewer language limitations. A lot of my work is training them. So if I want to teach an indigenous man how to do story, he has to see me do it first. Then after a while of walking alongside, he's very capable at that point. One partner in particular, he wants to go work with a group that has killed outsiders that have walked in. He's like, I don't care. God sent me to go do it. And this is such a, a 180 from most indigenous culture that you have to look at him and say, God brought this change to this man. You see families coming to Christ. You do see village headmans getting permission to come in. It really confirms everything that we're out there to do, to go out and make disciples of all nations. When we have those things happen, we sit back and go, okay, this is what it's all about. They can go and they can teach others, and those people can teach others. I want to see this momentum like a wave through the jungle where I can say, look, I didn't see it happen. I wasn't there, but I know the gospel has reached these dark corners. When supporters of the Lottie Moon Christmas offering gives, it allows us to do things like buy an outboard motor that gets us up river, to get equipment that we need to help us stay out there in the jungle. I've been supported by Lottie Moon. Y'all's generosity is, is a luxury that I never want to take for granted. So I want to say thank you for that. God is faithful in the hard times as he is in the good times, and our mandate doesn't change. These people groups in the jungle, you could be born, live, and die without ever hearing the name of our Savior. So someone has to go, because if we don't go, no one's gonna go. If we don't train people to go, no one's gonna go. It's worth it. I want to remind you that uh, we are in the time that we collect our Lottie Moon Christmas offering. And um, I enjoyed the video of the Amazon Basin. Man, that's crazy. You fly on an airplane for several hours, get off, and then get in, in a boat and travel three days uh, up the Amazon River to reach a people group that have not yet heard the gospel. We need to be praying for our missionaries. Those folks uh, have tremendous challenges and some very uh, difficult places in the world, but God has called them and they're being faithful to that. So we have an opportunity to uh, not only pray for them during this time, but also we have the opportunity to give to help provide support. So uh, please uh, give generously. Our goal is $15,000 and, and uh, we will be sending that to the International Mission Board to help our missionaries. 100% of it goes to the field. It doesn't stay in the United States. It goes to where our missionaries are serving others in unreached people groups. So give. I think that God will bless you and our church as we do this together. Well, here we are in the third week of Advent. The theme is uh, joy. 
And uh, today's message, is we're going to look in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. And in this uh, passage of Scripture, we're going to uh, discover this. They were, Mary and Joseph were in very difficult uh, situation after the angel had come and spoken to uh, Mary that she would be carrying the Christ child. And um, so they were in a difficult, hard time in, in their lives. And I think they were searching what is the right thing for us to do. And we'll go talk about that here in just a few moments as well too. But this is what I think we can discover from our text today. Joseph and Mary began to understand if they were going to have joy in their lives in the midst of something very hard and difficult to deal with. People talking about them behind their backs, people doubting what they were saying. Uh, there was just a tremendous amount of pressure on them. And what they had to discover, if they did things God's way, then they would experience joy. Sometimes we, we struggle with joy, I think, in these days. We're so tired of the COVID stuff. We're so, uh, we, we hear the numbers, we see the news stories, we read about it, we deal with it oftentimes in our own personal lives through our family members or maybe even our own lives as well too. So the question is, how do we find joy here in December of 2020 when everything's changing all around us? Uncertain what even the next day is going to bring to us. I think if we look carefully at this text today, we will discover ways that we can uh, find joy as we do things God's way. Let me read for you our text, Matthew chapter 1. Beginning in verse 18, we read, The birth of Jesus Christ came about this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. So her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins." Now, all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And when Joseph woke up, he did as the Lord's angel had commanded him. He married her but did not have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. Now, the fact that uh, Jesus was born to Mary, even though that uh, she had not had uh, sexual relationships with uh, Joseph, uh, needed to be explained to Matthew's readers. Remember, Matthew is writing this gospel. It's, he's addressing some concerns to the Jewish people about who Jesus is, about what Jesus' purpose was, and uh, why he was coming, why he came. So, in this section, in our text today, Matthew tells the story behind Jesus' birth and how all attempts to, to thwart God's plan goes awry when God gets involved. And we're going to see how this plays out here. Now, 
as we read the story, we, we may come to the, to the understanding that although God's actions were beyond human comprehension, and although they, Mary and Joseph faced misunderstandings and questioning looks from everyone that was around them, Mary and Joseph willingly followed God's guidance. In spite of what people may have thought, in spite of what people were saying, in spite of all the questioning of why they were doing what they were doing. So here's a question I think we need, each of us need to answer ourselves as we, uh, as we go through times such as we're in today. Here's the first question. How willing are we to do what God wants no matter what? How willing are we to do what God wants no matter what? Sometimes we find ourselves maybe not even thinking about it, but we become more important than God's important to us. And we want our way, we don't want it done when we want it done, how we want it done, instead of being patient and waiting on God's answers to our situations. Here's the next question. Can we follow God's guidance without question? Can we follow God's guidance without question? Several things I want to bring to mind today. First one is this. Joy is, we need to understand, God's way is not always our way. God's way is not always our way. Now, as we read in the opening verses of this text, Joseph had every right. He had every right to do away with Mary through divorce or even having her stoned to death. He could have done that. Matter of fact, most people would have applauded Joseph for doing the right thing and divorcing her or having her put to death. So I want you to put your, put your place and, and uh, put your mind in Joseph's place here for just a moment. Joseph, these circumstances must have had Joseph desperately confused at this point in time. Here was Mary, the the young lady that he loved and wanted to spend the rest of his life with. And now she tells him this news about carrying a child, even though she had not had sexual relations with anyone. So Joseph says, what, what do I do? Do I have her stoned to death? Do I just divorce her? Can you imagine what is racing through his mind? What am I going to do next? How... He must have been so confused and, and, and so discouraged. And think about this. What, we, what was Mary thinking? All right, I got I'm telling this news to Joseph. Now then, what's he going to do? What's he going to think about me? Is he going to listen to everyone else that's talking about this situation? Remember what the psalmist says. And the psalmist says, and it's a good reminder for us today as well, too. The psalmist says, your ways are not my ways, O Lord. Your ways are not my ways. And if that verse of Scripture or that Scripture or those words from that psalmist came to Joseph and Mary's mind, do you think that helped Joseph and Mary in the middle of their chaos? Think about this. What should have been one of the most joyous occasions? Joseph and Mary expecting their first baby, looking, looking forward, thinking what that was going to be like in their, in their lives together, having their children. What should have been a joyous occasion was now marred by what seemed to be a soap opera, and on top of that, an immoral soap opera. Their life has been turned, their lives have been turned upside down. 
There's confusion. There's discouragement. Matthew explains that Mary was pregnant through the Holy Spirit, which is a divine initiative. God initiated this. And think about this. This has, has not ha that had not happened prior to Mary's encounter with uh, Angel Gabriel. And this kind of encounter has not happened since. So we might ask the question, well, why did, it, why did it happen this way? And the answer just boils down to this. It just simply, it was God's way to bring the child into this world. A little theology here for us, lesson for, we talked about this a little bit last week, and I want to just remind us again this week. Why is a virgin birth important to our faith? to the Christian faith. Jesus Christ, God's Son, had to be free from the sinful nature that had been passed on to all other human beings by Adam. And because Jesus was born of a woman, he was a human being, he brought on that humanity. And but as the Son of God, Jesus was born without a trace of human sin because Jesus is both fully God and fully human. You see, the infinite, the unlimited God took on the limitations of humanity so He could live and die for the salvation for all of those who believe and trust in Him. And because Jesus lived as a man, we know from Scripture that He fully understands all of our struggles, all of the difficulties, our experiences in life. The writer of Hebrews over in the fourth chapter of Hebrews, verses 15 and 16, records for us, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are yet without sin. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And over in Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 through 15 we understand because He is God, He has the power, He has the authority to deliver us from sin. Now listen, we can tell Jesus all of our thoughts, all of our feelings. We can tell Him all about our needs that we have in our lives. He has been where we are now. He has the full power of heaven to help us in our life's experiences and in our struggles. You see, without the virgin birth, there would be no forgiveness of sin. Without the virgin birth, there would be no possibility of God's kingdom coming to earth or even in heaven. And so, as Joseph and Mary wrestled with this di dilemma of what were the next steps in their lives, what was the next thing that they needed to do, what was the next decision they had to make? This was cause for great joy, even though they were in the midst of utter confusion because they knew God's way was the best way. And in the midst of all of that stuff they were dealing with, and stuff that we deal with, it ought to bring joy to us as we come to the point to realize God's way is best. Second thing we also think that they, they learned, and we learn as well too from this text, God's way always saves. God's way always saves. 
Matter of fact, the name of Jesus means the Lord saves. It always has, and my friends, it always will. Jesus always saves and brings life. Remember, it's the enemy. The Satan is the one who comes to kill, to destroy, and to, uh, and to steal. I just want you to know this 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 past this year since March, it's been very very difficult to make decisions. And sometimes, when 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 people are faced with making hard decisions, making big decisions, some people just freeze up. They say, "What if I decide wrong?" And beloved, I'm going to let you know. I have a- I have asked myself that question. We also ask ourselves the question, what if, what if I miss God's will? What am I missing here? And we can come up with all kinds of what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. But to make good decisions, first we need to take all of these worries and put them under God's promises that we find in Scripture. Promises such like this, God cares for you. God watches over you. God guides your steps as you come to Him. So, Joseph came to the best decision he could. He was going to secretly divorce Mary. He didn't want to bring any kind of public shame to her. Secretly divorce her. And then the angel appeared to Joseph and began to unveil that God had other plans for Joseph and Mary. And that angel made that message very clear to Joseph. Now, the reality is most of our decisions will not be overruled by angels. But that's no reason for us to lack confidence and knowing God's plan is always best. So, how do we make good decisions? What do we, what do we pray for? We, we evaluate all the options that are available to us. We do those things. We talk with trusted friends. Man, I have talked to a lot of friends since March. And then, as we pray... Seek God's will, God's direction. We step out in faith. We act in faith. And God is with us every step of the way. Also, God's ways always have God's presence with us. God's ways always, we always have God's presence with us. We know what Emmanuel means, don't we? Emmanuel means God is with us. God was with Joseph and Mary as they wrestled through uh, this hard time in their lives. We need to understand that God is with us as well, too, in the hard times of our lives. And God's presence should bring us joy and peace. Even when His ways do not make a bit of sense to us, even when His ways doesn't fit within our cultural norms of what we think ought to be done. And this was certainly the case for Mary and Joseph. But they came to understand that what they were going through, they also had God's presence with them as well, too. And we have that in our lives. But here's something else we need to understand. God's ways always requires risk. God's ways always require risk. This is when, when, when Joseph 
changed his plan to secretly divorce Mary and follow God's plan for their lives, this was what Joseph was willing to do. He was willing to put his life and his reputation on the line when he decided to do things God's way. He changed his plans very quickly after learning God's plan from the angel. He obeyed God and then began to proceed to follow the steps to marry Mary and begin their life together. Now, although others more than likely disapproved of his decision, Thankfully, Joseph didn't have to deal with phone calls and text and emails when people didn't approve of, of his decision. But even though people didn't approve of it, Joseph went ahead with what he knew was the right thing to do. And the right thing to do was doing God's way of doing things. Sometimes we avoid doing what is right because of what others think. Joseph had to choose to obey God rather than seek the approval of others. Let me just tell you, as your pastor, a pastor of Green Valley Baptist Church, I would do almost anything that I could to make everybody happy. But that's not the case in 2020. Joseph followed God's way rather than seeking the approval of others. And there's always a risk in following God's way from a human perspective. However, we should have great joy in the fact that though we may not, under, uh, may not understand and though it's against whatever things that we thought we ought to be doing, we find joy in doing things God's way. One other thing. God's way always requires sacrifice. God's way always requires sacrifice. Joseph did what God wanted even though it could have cost him everything, even his marriage to Mary. And we need to understand this, my friends. God's way is not always the easy way. God's way is not always easy. But we will open up the potential for the fullest of God's blessings if we are willing to sacrifice our agendas and our plans in order to do things God's way. So what does that mean for us today? Well, we think about joy. We sing about it. And matter of fact, when it, we come to this Christmas season, we think it's almost just ought to be an automatic reality that we're going to have joy. People are going to be happy. People are going to be excited. Oftentimes that's superficial. Oftentimes we're doing that just to be nice. But here's something we really need to understand. If we want real joy in our lives, we follow God's way. We want real joy in our lives, we follow God's way. Oh, we try to manufacture happiness and joy, but it will only come to us as we do God's will and His plan for our lives. Remember, God cares for you. God watches over you, and He guides your steps. Joseph came to the best decision he could make, the decision of being obedient and to surrender to God's plan. 
And he made his jo choice very clear that he would do exactly what God told him to do. This Christmas season, remember, Emmanuel, God, is with us. Regardless of the circumstances of our day, regardless of how we feel, we can still sing joy to the world knowing that Jesus has come to be with you each and every day, no matter what. Are you experiencing joy this season? If you're following God's plan and God's way, you are experiencing joy. We may look around us and say, you know what, there's not much to be joyful for this year. I can't, I can't travel to see my family. I can, we can't get together with our friends. Uh, everything is changing at our church right now because of all of this. It's hard for me to be joyful. But if you look deep within your heart, and you seek God's will and God's plan, He will bring joy in spite of the adverse circumstances. Today, I hope you find the pathway to joy through Jesus Christ, accepting Him as your Lord and Savior if you've not done that. Or if you have, and you still find yourself struggling to have joy in the midst of all of our circumstances, simply sit down, take some time, ask God to show you what He wants, what His plans are for your life, and look for that joy knowing you will be obedient and walk in faith. We invite you to turn your heart and your life over to Christ and experience the real joy. God bless you. Let's remember to pray and encourage each other this Christmas season. Thank you, Pastor, for that message. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. And thank you for this season that remembers his coming to earth. Lord, we just keep us ever mindful of the joy. Help us to share that joy with others. And I would share one other thought with you uh, in the the thought of, of sharing joy. We are coming up on uh, time for staff gift. If you haven't submitted one yet and you wish to, please do so. Uh, we're asked to get that into the church office uh, by, by Monday of this week. So 
By all means, if you're at a distance, drop it in the mail, but we'll pass that on to the staff as a thank you for them, because they have been working diligently through this whole time. Now, Father, be with us as we go into the week. Help us to be mindful of sharing you with those about us. In Jesus' name, amen.